you, um, you just to put it out there because I think we all know it. If you go out on the street here uh, and ask um, people, you know, randomly, and nine out of ten would say that organizations exist to to produce a profit. Um, but I think you know everyone listening here knows that that's you know profit is a means to an end. Um, the, the end is the, the purpose of the organization. You need profit in order to realize your purpose, but profit is not. Uh, what it's all about um oh, um so you know, let's let's establish that first of all but also let's let's establish something that uh and, and this took me a long time to understand uh stupidly but we're not saying that running a uh profit focused organization um cannot make you a lot of money because obviously it can so the, 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 the question is not, can you run a for-profit company just for the profit? Like, obviously you can. The question is, why would you want to? Right? That's, like, that, that, that question for me took them, it's sort of, oh, I get it now. Um, so, uh, so the organization needs profit to fulfill its purpose. Uh, and at the end of the day, you want to uh, be proud of what you created and what you look back on, right? So, okay. Nine, nine people out of 10 would say profit. That is not the right answer. Um, it's, it's there to fulfill a purpose. Um, the, other, the other part of the answer uh, goes back into um, management cybernetics and complexity theory, uh, which, which, sounds, which sounds very complicated, but it's, it's actually not that big of a deal. Um, just think of it this way. There are activities out there that require more than one person to fulfill. Uh, either, either you need more than one pair of hands or you need, um, you know, things need to happen at different time zones or at different places over the world. So you need to collaborate with other people and hence you need an organization. So in that sense, an organization is a way to uh, handle complexity. So that's another reason why organizations exist. Now that in turn leads us to a third answer um, that has to do with transaction costs and, and a, a theory that um, Roland Coase, I think his name is, he, he, he uh, won the Nobel Peace Prize, no, not Peace Prize, he, Nobel, uh, he won the Nobel in, in economics in 1991 for this theory of transaction costs, which again is pretty simple, but basically says that as you start needing to hire in additional people, um, you need to go out in the market and you need to find a freelancer, you need to find uh, you know, a service provider of some sort. And every time you do this, there's going to be a cost in terms of time and money to secure that, uh, that help. Um, and it, it, it makes financial sense over time to try to minimize that cost. And so the reason organizations exist according to COS is that um, if, if, I, if I need to build websites every week, why, why not just hire people in to have an internal market uh, within my company make so that I don't have to pay the transaction cost of going outside to, to, to build trust and source the contract. Mm. Um, so that's a, you know, that's a sort of answer. And, and sorry, if I, if I can go, if I can go one more level deeper, um, is, um, the idea of transaction cost um, is really interesting. It's so simple, but it sort of explains a lot of things, but it also ties into I don't know if, um, if you have how much you've read into Web3, blockchain, uh, decentralized autonomous organization, et cetera. But the promise of the trustless economy is basically that they will um, do away with transaction costs or at least lower them substantially, which raises the question that maybe, maybe what we're looking at now at the beginning of Web3 is the end of organizations as we know it. Uh, which is super interesting. And, and to, to be fair, like there's, there's people on both sides of the spectrum. Some people say that this is just, just um, uh, well, there's a lot of skepticism, to put it that way. Uh, uh, and so there's, you know, people all, all along the gamut, but it's interesting that we are we even having that discussion, right? Saying that there is now a technology that could potentially in 10, 20 years mean that we don't, we won't have organizations like we do today. 